Hi, this is Roger in Finland, and today we're gonna take a look at how to color grade OM Log 400 from the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II in DaVinci Resolve. And before hopping into DaVinci Resolve and do that in detail, let's have a quick rundown for the really impatient ones. To grade OM Log 400, the way I do it is I put the official LUT in the very end, in the last note and then I do the color grading correction and exposure adjustments before the LUT. I always start by adjusting the exposure, then I do color corrections, sometimes I split it into different nodes, usually one to adjust the white balance and another one to make fine color adjustments, especially if I have had a, the color checker in my hands, then I can be precise with that, and then maybe the color grading would be the artistic aspect of this. And that's, in a nutshell, how I grade OM Block 400 in DaVinci Resolve. But now let's hop into it and let's get into a lot more details. So now we're in DaVinci Resolve 17. Let me show you my project settings first. So I have the Color Science DaVinci YRGB and the color space and the timeline Rec 709 with Gamma 2.4. And then let's see what do we do. Here we have a clip. I'm holding here the x right color checker. We're gonna check the color accuracy in a moment and then just my face there with only one light. As you can see, this is a little bit underexposed for when exposing lock should be. So maybe ideally this should be maybe one or two stops higher, but I'm not gonna be pushing the shadows much here, so we're gonna be okay. But that's something to remember anyway. What I would like to do is to use color space transforms to use DaVinci Resolve's color management and basically try to go from like whatever the camera gives me to Ari Loxy in here and Ari Alexa, but the challenge is that Olympus is not present in DaVinci Resolve's color management. I guess it's normal, it's definitely um, cameras geared um, to photography, not video, so they are not so popular. Obviously, here we have all the black magic stuff. We do have also some other consumer camera things, so kind of look at this is in some of the kind of mirrorless things. There's Fuji, there's Panasonic V Log, we have the Sony ZS Log. S Log 2 and 3, which can be found in the 6400 and, and definitely consumer cameras, but Olympus is not here. So I can't use color space transforms. So we're gonna have to go through the LUT route. Let me reset the note and I'll grab my LUT. And this is the official Olympus LUT to go from OM Log 400 to Rec 709. And I'll just slap it there. And as you can see, it doesn't look great. So as I told to the impatient ones, I do my color, my corrections before the LUT and not after, but let's check why. Let me add one note after and let me add one note before. So if you think about it now, in this note, I'm still in log format. Here I'm doing the conversion to Rec 709, which means that here I will be working in Rec 709. And you can see that this is the input of the node. The input of this one is already Rec 709. The waveform is showing the full picture that we see with the full grid. If I would turn this on, the magic wand, now the waveform is also showing how does the output of the node look like. But anyway, if I do my corrections afterwards, I'm just gonna show the difference between dealing with the offset after. See what it's doing. I'm not getting anything good out of just touching this. Let me reset the note and I'll check the behavior if I do it on the log profile. It's vastly different. The shadows are much better controlled and I can do this a little bit and this works a lot, a lot better. So here basically the point is that what you have is log, which is this big, then with the LUT you're squeezing it into Rec 709. Another question is what are you working on? If you're working with this squeezed image already, there's very little you can do. If you're working with the lock image, there's a lot more you can do. But then why have the LUT in the middle? The thing is if I do not have the LUT, I don't really know what I'm doing when manipulating lock because manipulating lock is difficult. <laughs> and that's how it is. And some lock formats are easier than others but quite many are difficult to get good results. So that's why you see many forums like flat is good, but you cannot get good results from log. It's because it's very difficult to really do the transformations of what the gamma is and the color interpretation 
manually by yourself without the help of color managed uh, like in DaVinci Resolve or LUTs. So I used a lot, I can see what's the final result and then I can do stuff here. So what I do usually is I have this LUT in the end, this note I'm going to be touching, let's do it again, exposure, then I usually have another one for color correction and then what would be the create or the artistic bit of it if you can call it that and then when exp changing the exposure either I have the waveform in the Y format or then I put the saturation at zero it helped me a little to focus on the exposure not on anything else in the in the image but basically what I would like is to get my face closer to this 6400 IRA here and I'll do that by taking a bit of the offset and maybe a bit of the highlight so that's okay but now the darks are very very dark so let me leave them while well, everything else still okay I don't like super contrasty images that's of course a, a matter of preference but here basically you have the image with the LUT applied without the exposure correction and now with the exposure corrected. This still my face looks a little bit too exposed so let's fix that still and we can maybe now play with the curves just to use a, a different tool but now this looks a lot more like I would like it to look. Again the look of your final image is something which is very personal so I'm just showing uh, methods that you can apply to then uh, take your look but this is the LUT applied to and somewhat underexposed oh I'm locked so you can imagine if I would have overexposed it this would look even worse and this is after my exposure correction I was shooting by the way with automatic white balance which seems to be very very good in this camera so now let's see how much do I need to color correct here first thing is to take a look at the uh, white balance. So I take the speaker and this gray it's actually already perfect so it's this one if I pick this one it's not gonna change anything so that's fantastic there's almost no before and after because it didn't have to do anything but that's really good then what we can do is zoom in here and take a look at the color accuracy so let me go to the timeline let's zoom this and let's get this color checker in the middle and now let's go and take a look at our vector scope as you can see the skin tones are on the skin tone line already red's fine yellow's fine green's fine cyan is fine magenta looks fine blue looks like it's a little bit skewed so now I'm going to try to fix that a little bit. Now I'm already being like maybe pedantically precise, but that's why I like to use this color checker. And you'll see what I do in the end because it's something that is practical after you have done this once. I'm going to add another node, just label it fix blue. So you can see what I'm doing here. And basically my goal is to get the blue aligned there. I'm just going to put more saturation so I can see better in the brectoscope where those colors are going. And now let's do this. I'm going to be using actually this color warper and basically what I want is to get that blue a little bit more towards the blue. You can see there where that's where the blue is, not where it should be. Um, this is better, this is better and the cyan might need attention but that's uh, something else. So now what I'll do is select this and move it and you can see what happens in the vectorscope you see that? I just moved it a little bit and now we get the blue where it's supposed to be. I'm going to give this a shape that makes some sense, so it's a little bit corrected. But now we get the blue where we wanted it. The magenta is already, so is the red, so is the yellow, so is the green, so is the cyan. So now I'm happy. I don't need to do anything else here. I'm going to bring back the saturation to where it should be. And now, and now let's just take out the zoom. And let's take a look again. So now this is with the color correction just fixing the blue. 
and without the blue fixed. It's very, very minimal. I know I'm being super precise, but I'm just showing you guys what can be done uh, with the color checker and then playing with the color warper and also how color accurate was the Olympus already. One thing that we can check is also where my skin tones, not just the ones in the color chart. So I'm gonna put here a circle. Let's take the feathering out. Just gonna put it in my face. I'm gonna do this so that we don't see anything else. And it tends a little bit towards the red rather being on top of the skin tones. But I prefer it this way because my natural color is a little bit on the yellow side. So if my face is a little bit pushed to the red, I feel that I look a bit more okay. So forgive me about that, but I'm gonna be happy with the skin tones that my Olympus is giving me. So let's take this away. And now pretty much I'm done. I fixed the exposure, I fixed the color. The next thing that can be done is a crate. And here be as creative as you want. I don't know, we can add a bit of the blue in the shadows. You can see the difference without and with and maybe a little bit of orangey in the mid-tones. I know I'm sounding like I'm doing teal and orange, but just to show you something done after the correction and the exposure. But there you go, before and after. So what I do is I keep that as a steel, so I have my gallery here and I can get and grab a steel. And this steel is all this great with a snapshot. And now what I can do, for instance, if I go to see the rest of the clips, here I have another clip, which is totally ungraded. You can see that the colors are uh, maybe not so okay. If now I just apply the same grade that we just created, the colors are accurate where they are supposed to be, and I'm ready. Now, what I actually do also is if I have totally different clips shot with the same camera in a very, very different context like this one, so this was also shot with a one block 400. So now what I would do is apply the same grade. And I know that most likely it has fixed whatever it had to be fixed. Then what I can do is actually then adjust the exposure as I would like to, because maybe this is not what you wanted with this particular image. So let me show you first how applying the full grade so this is the log image and this is the full grade and I pretty much like it how it is. Maybe let's let me disable this particular note and let's take a look at this was the artistic bit so on and off so maybe that blue in the shadows here doesn't work well at all but everything else I'm pretty happy actually so I don't want to touch anything. Let's see another clip. This one let's apply the same grade here. Let's hide the clips, let's hide the gallery. And this one, I'm not as happy as I was with the exposure as the previous one, so let me take a look. By the way, this is the lock image as I recorded it. As you can see, it's clipping on the sun, re being reflected on the eyes. This is the light, which makes it even worse. This is the color correction as it was done in the previous one, so I think this note is still fine. This one would not be so much needed because I just touched the white to white balance and we just said that. Probably you don't need to do this but in case you messed up with the white balance you might. And then let's fix the exposure here so let's activate the note and again let's play V4 the LUT. And here as you can see in the waveform this is clearly clipping so what I do is I decide to not put uh, that as pure white. It is clipping so this is flat but it's not pure white. And then maybe we can add some contrast, but adjusting a bit the curves even more. Now, I like this better. Let me take a, again a look. The lock image, the crate, and this is without exposure adjustment, with the exposure adjustment. So, in summary, going back to this image, this kind of YouTube talking head type of thing. This is what I do always with a one block 400. Last note is the official, lo uh, the last note is the official LUT to go from OM lock 400 to Rex 709. 
and before that I do all my adjustments, which usually are, because I've done this now quite a few times, first the exposure, which is very specific to the image and how you expose things, second color correction, which mostly is adjusting white balance in case I messed up, and I said the auto white balance works surprisingly well in this camera. The next one, that one that I'm keeping, because in every single time that I've done with different lighting situations, but with the color checker, the blue is the one that is always a little bit to the same direction. So this pretty much always fixes the blue to be precisely where it should be. And then I do some great if I feel like. I have this saved actually, not just as a steel, but I have it as a power grid here, together with the rest of the power grids that I use for other cameras. And then I just lap this power grid to whatever OM block thing I'm doing. And then I adjust the exposure to the precise clip that I'm working with. But this is how I work with OM block. The LUT is very useful, you need to do something else with it, but now you know where to put the LUT and maybe you learn something new on how to manipulate things in DaVinci Resolve. And I didn't mention it at the beginning, but these clips are also being recorded with that particular camera, the OMD EM1 Mark II, shooting in OM Log, and this is also being graded exactly using the method that I just showed. Hopefully you learned something new or you got some ideas. If you did like the video, please like and subscribe, and we're gonna see you soon for some more content. Thank you.